Do you want to know how to make this Iman Gaji style animation from scratch? This animation to the side of you? Or even this full screen animation? Well, that's what I showed you last video in Adobe After Effects, but this time, since there's so much demand for it, I'm going to make a tutorial in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, which is completely free, by the way. If you're a beginner to intermediate DaVinci Resolve editor, I guarantee you, you will get more video editing jobs with these animations. So for the first effect I'm going to be doing, the first thing that you want to do is go into the toolbox right here in the effects tab and then click this little search icon and type in fusion composition and it should pop up right here. You wanna bring it into the timeline and make sure that your playhead is over it and then enter the fusion tab down here. Next thing you wanna do is you might have the split view. So you wanna click this square on the second one just to make it one view. Drag a background node in and plug the input into the media app. Now we're gonna keep this background solid for now. So this effect is really cool because you can use it with an article or like a Twitter page. And in this case, I'm gonna use my YouTube channel page, but you can use it with anything you want. And it's really good for like documentary style edits or just like if you want Iman Gaji style. So I'm gonna press Windows Shift S to screenshot like this. Then just drag it into the Fusion page and drag this output onto this square here and it'll create a merge node. Immediately, the first thing you wanna do is highlight this media in and merge one and press Control C to copy it. And then make sure you have this highlighted and then press Control V and it will automatically paste it into the node chain. And for this one, we're gonna separate this page and animate each of the elements. You can split the page up into however many elements you want, but for this one, we're gonna do 13. And you wanna copy the media in one node and the merge one node. Press Control C while highlighting it to copy it. And then Control V. I'm gonna paste this 12 more times for my case, but you can split up the page into however many elements you want. It just depends what you want it to look like. So I've copied and pasted it 13 times. Now I'm gonna move this media out one a little bit out in order to fit a transform node in there. So this transform node, what I'm gonna do is adjust the size of everything because I want it to be a bit bigger. And it's also a little too far to the left. This looks good, so now I'm going to start adding my rectangle mask. You wanna bring in the rectangle node from right here and then drag the input into the median one. And this will allow you to mask out each element. So I'm gonna start with this profile picture up here and that should be good. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste it, drag it into the next one. For this one, I'm just gonna get like my name and my channel bio. And I'm just repeating the same process and masking out each element. So I'm gonna do this one as another one that I'm gonna animate. From here, you probably get the gist of it, so I'm going to speed up the process. Now that I've finished masking out all my layers, I can start to organize them. So you can see if I highlight all of these ones, there, actually this one as well. You can see that these are all of the thumbnails that I highlighted and masked out. So I'm gonna hold shift on this selection and drag, and it will drag all of them out of the node chain. And then you can see here I have the other buttons. But for this chain of nodes, I'm actually going to move it over to the beginning and highlight all of these, move them to the end. Then I drag a background node plug it into this first merge node and turn down the alpha all the way. I'm also gonna just drag these out of the way. And now we're gonna animate these from the bottom to the top. So to do that, you just take out a transform node, hold shift to add it into the node chain. And on this last merge node for now, we can press two, or you can just hold on the merge node and drag it into this screen and will show up in this view. Now I'm gonna go to this transform node. I'll go to around 20 frames and I'm gonna put a keyframe on the center move my playhead back to zero, then use this arrow to move it down out of the screen. Then I can just control C, control V, paste this transform node into all of the other layers. If you've done it, if you've done it correctly, it should look something like this so far. Now we want to use the box highlight to highlight all of the transform nodes. We're going to go into the spline tab and click on this three dots. Make sure you click show only selected tool, then start checking all of these boxes and press this zoom to fit button. Now you can zoom out a little bit, highlight these two keyframes here and press S, press T and adjust the ease in and ease out. So I, I moved it to about 50. I'd say it looks pretty decent. Now click out of the spline tab and go into the keyframes tab. Again, you wanna press this zoom to fit button and then start clicking all of these drop down menus. I'd recommend using this zoom in scroll bar here 
just so you can get finer adjustments. And I'm gonna start staggering the keyframes of each layer. So the first one I'm gonna keep in the same spot. The second one, I'll move it around like two frames forward. Next one, around the same. Doesn't have to be perfect like that. And you wanna click on this part in between the two like yellowish boxes and just drag to the right. If you've done it correctly, it should look something like this now. Now get out of the keyframes tab. You wanna highlight all of these and hit Control G to group it. Move this over here and create a merge node. Go ahead and take this media out and drag it onto the screen to show the final view. Next, I'm gonna do some more organizing. So I'm gonna take this element right here, this one and this one that's like my profile picture, put them all together by dragging, holding shift and moving it out of the chain and just rearranging them. Now why I put these together is these three, I'm gonna do zoom in animations and these last two, I'm gonna have this one come from the top and I'm gonna have the other one come from the side. First, we'll start with the zoom in animations. Take your transform node, hold shift and drag it into the chain. First thing you wanna do is adjust the pivot. Make sure it is in the center of the element that you want to make zoom in. So I'm going to put it right about in the center of the profile picture. Put a keyframe, go to frame 20, put a keyframe on the size this time, and then go to frame zero and drag the size all the way down. Now I'm going to copy this transform node and paste it into the next element. It should look like this. The only thing you need to do here to fix it is move this pivot point to the center. Now it looks like this. Copy paste it one more time, move the pivot point to the center, and that looks good. Highlight all three of those transform nodes, go into the spline, same process as we did with the other transform nodes. So just press S to smooth everything out. You can adjust the ease in and ease out as much as you want, and I'm not gonna stagger them this time. Lastly, I'm gonna do the panning in animations. So take your transform node, go to frame 20, keyframe on the center, move it to frame zero, and make sure you're on this arrow, drag it to the top, and take another transform node, put a keyframe on the center at frame 20, drag it to frame zero, and drag this one all the way to the side. Now highlight these two transform nodes, Go into the spline tab, zoom to fit, and smooth everything out like that. Now your animation should look something like this. The last and final two steps you wanna do is add these filters. So the first filter we're gonna add is like a wavy type of filter. To create this, you wanna drag in fast noise from here and press two on the keyboard on the fast noise node to pull it up. You can see it's kind of still, so we wanna move the seeth rate up just like that. And you can mess with all of these sliders because you can get a different look for yourself if you want, but you can also copy my settings if that works for you too. Okay, so I like the look of this. I'm gonna press Control Space to open up this Select Tool menu and find the Displace node. Make sure the Fast Noise is plugged into the Displace and hold Shift to drag this Displace in the node chain. I'm gonna press two on the final media out. And now you can see there is the fast noise effect, but kind of applied on the screen. Now you wanna find a paper overlay on YouTube, copy the link to it, download it with any YouTube to MP4 downloader and drag it into your Fusion composition. Then last thing to do is connect it up so it merges and you can see this paper background is here. And on the merge node, I'ma go to the apply mode, switch it from normal to multiply. And lastly, I'm going to turn the blend down. And this is what the final effect looks like. Okay, so the next effect, pull out a fusion composition, just like you did for the first one, go into the fusion tab, and we're gonna bring in a background node, turn down the alpha all the way. Then let's take out another background node, the rectangle tool as well, plug it into the background node and the background node onto the square of this background node so it merges automatically. Now let's just change the dimensions of the square. So I'm going to make it around here, probably. Depends where you want to put it on the screen. Usually you could put it to the side of you. Now click on the background node and instead of solid color, we want to select gradient. And for this gradient, let's move this node up here or whatever you want to call it. And this one here and drag it to the bottom and let's drag this one up a little bit all the way up here and we're not going to have it be black we'll have it be like a very dark gray and then instead of white we'll do a lighter gray kind of like that now we're going to go to the rectangle node and adjust the corner radius 
to something like that. Next we have this PNG of a hand holding a diamond. We can move this around. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger like that. And selecting this merge node, I'm going to change the operator to a top instead of over. And you see it now it doesn't go outside of the rectangle. After that, drag in a text node. We're going to merge it. And for the text, we'll just type in high value and use the font for bell. It should come pre-installed with Windows 10. We're going to change it from bold to light italic. Right click on this text box here, go to character level styling, then go to modifiers up here. And for the word value, we'll highlight those characters and change this one to bold italic. Then let's create the animation. So you want to go back to the rectangle node, go to around frame 20. Put a keyframe on the height, go to frame zero, and drag the height all the way down. Also, so this text stays inside of the rectangle, let's go to the merge node under the text and select a top instead of over. And it should look something like this so far. Let's select the rectangle tool and go to the spline tab. Click this checkbox here and click the zoom to fit. Let's smooth this out and ease in and ease out. Now to create a white border around it, DaVinci Resolve does not make it easy to outline things. So we're gonna have to add in a couple nodes here. First, let's add in a road slash dilate. Then let's drag in a background node. We're gonna make it white. And from here, let's drag in another merge node. Hold shift to drag it into the node chain. Now connect this input into the road dilate, but make sure it's still connected into the next merge. Connect the road dilate into the background and then the background into this merge. Now on this merge, now on this second merge here, we can select under, go to the road dilate and turn the amount up. Something like this looks pretty good to me. Now it looks like this. The last finishing touches are pretty easy. Just go back into the edit page, go to this first animation that I made. And if you skip this part, go back to the first animation. I explain what all of these nodes are. But basically, I'm just going to copy them, go back into the other fusion composition, and paste them in. I'm going to turn the blend down on the paper effect a little bit, and it looks something like this. And you can see how the background got darker because the paper texture actually goes outside of it. So to fix this, copy this rectangle node and drag it into this media in one. Now the paper effect shouldn't go outside of the rectangle. And let's say you want to move it to the side of you and kind of tilt it a little bit. You can bring in a transform node, and this one is a different type of transform node. So there's actually two types. Types. one that's an older one I believe and this newer one doesn't have XF next to it so bring in the newer one hold shift to drag it into the chain now let's move the X position change the yaw of it and the zoom and if you were speaking in the middle of the frame here you could have this pop up at the side now for the last effect bring in a fusion composition as usual bring in a background node and plug it into the media out and bring the alpha all the way down now bring in all three of the pyramid layers Links for them will be in the description. Drag in a background node and turn the alpha all the way down and plug into the merge one. Set it up so the bottom layer of the pyramid is first in the chain and the last one is the top layer. Then drag the last one into a transform node. Make sure to press two on the transform node so that shows up in the viewer. Add in a text node and merge that up. Type in 1% and select the font VP pixel. Link for that font will be in the description. Now in the text node, go into the layout tab and start adjusting the X, Y, and Z values until you like the look of it. Then we can deconnect this media in one node, which is the top layer and also the text node. Also bring the merge nodes with it and group them all up. Then we can merge up the group. After that, bring in the background, which is also in the description. Press two on the media out to pull it up in the viewer and bring in a transform node so you can make the background big enough. Also bring in a color curves layer and you wanna bring down the middle a little bit to create some contrast. Now go back to your other node chain, press two on the transform node. Drag in another transform node and bring it under the bottom layer. Go to around frame 17, doesn't have to be exact. Put a keyframe on the center, go back to frame zero and bring it all the way up out of screen. Now control C, control V to copy and paste that transform node and paste it under the next layer and also under the group. Now it should look something like that. Let's highlight all of the transform nodes, go into the keyframes tab and pull down the drop down menus. Now if we zoom it up a little bit, we can stagger the animation by highlighting the keyframes and dragging to the right. With those nodes still selected, let's go into the spline tab and click on the three dots, click on show only selected tool, check all of the boxes and zoom to fit. Highlight the keyframes, press S, press T, and then adjust the ease in and ease out. Now let's group all of those nodes. 
pressing Ctrl G and merge the group to the chain. Press two on the media out to see the final product. And it should look something like this so far. Now let's press two on this merge node. And instead of canvas, we're gonna change it to mirror. On the merge node at frame zero, put a keyframe on the center. Go three frames forward and put another keyframe at the same exact settings. Then move one frame forward and just drag the background wherever you want. The coordinates just have to be different from the first keyframe. Now move it another three keyframes forward and put another keyframe without moving it. Then go one frame forward and start to move it again. Then repeat this process over and over again until you've done a couple of them and you're ready to loop the animation. Go to the spline tab highlighting this merge node and click the zoom to fit button or just zoom out. Highlight all of the keyframes. Press this loop button right here. It's gonna be at the bottom and look like this. Now your spline tab should look something like that. And when you play it, it loops. Let's press two on the media out so we can see the final product so far. And it looks something like that. Now we can put a transform node and around frame 18, we're gonna put a keyframe on the size and make sure that this is after all of the pyramid layers come down or maybe like as the animation is finishing. Then go about like 20, 22 frames forward. On frame 40, that's what I chose to bring the size all the way up. And we're gonna make it zoom in on the layer that says 1%. At the starting keyframe of the animation, I also put a keyframe on the center. And at the ending one, I move the center up. So now when it zooms in, it zooms in on the top layer instead of the middle. Then highlighting this transform node, go into the spline tab, make sure you zoom to fit and highlight all of those keyframes. Press S and adjust the ease in and ease out. This time for the animation, adjust the ease in and ease out a lot, almost up to like 80 or 90, and it should zoom in fast like that. Now bring in another background node with a rectangle attached to it. bring the height up then in the inspector tab we can click invert and it will create these black bars on the top and bottom. The last thing to do is just to go back into the first effect that we made and copy all of these nodes. If you skipped to this part then go back to the end of the first animation and you'll see what I mean. Now paste these nodes in, drag them into the timeline and this is what your final product should look like. If you want this type of editing on your channel and you're a coach, course creator, or entrepreneur, then check out in the description how we can run your YouTube channel completely done for you. If you're an editor and you want a ton of copyright free music, sound effects, stock footage, and even drag and drop templates, I have two links in the description to Artlist and Motion Array. I think they're really good subscription services if you want to improve your editing. And it's also a pretty good way to support me because I get a small commission if you buy any of their subscriptions through my link. And specifically for the people who are short form video editors, I made this really good tutorial on how to edit short form like Devin Jatho, so I recommend you check that out. 